In this video, I'm gonna show you how to stylize your photo from start to finish and later, we'll find out ways how to save that as a preset. Now here's the thing guys, this video is not limited to getting a particular kind of effect. Whatever you want, whether you wanna make the colors pop or you wanna get that contrasty black and white look which is popular, whatever you want with your photos, this video will just open up your mind to find out ways to get what you want. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's jump straight in. So here we are in Photoshop and today we're going to study the approach in getting what you want my friend. So this photo by the way is available for download links in the description below. So the first thing, create an adjustment layer but before that, I just skipped it. Think what you want to do with your photos, have a vision, have a look, have a vision. For example, in this photo I would love very much if she had more colors. If we had more colors in the photos, a little bit more contrasty and a little more punchy. So think of it in terms of an order. What's the most basic thing you want? In this, we want color, all right? So let's open up the Vibrance adjustment layer. Let's add a Vibrance adjustment layer. Click on this gray white icon. Let's add Vibrance. Now take the Vibrance ladder all the way to the right. Now we love the colors. What if you want more colors? Add one more Vibrance adjustment layer, okay? One more Vibrance adjustment layer and increase it to the point where you think it's okay. Now this is too much. This is okay. Maybe 40 or something like that. I would stay with 40. Now think of what you want. Maybe a little bit of highlights, kind of dimension to it. All right, let's do that. Let's add any adjustment layer. Maybe try hue saturation and then change the blend mode from normal to screen because you want to add highlights, right? Remember what I told you, screen is such a blend mode which lightens things up. So this category, things lighten, this category, things darken. Remember it that way, lighten, screen, darken, multiply. Select screen and let's try decreasing the saturation all the way to minus 100. Now, to add the dimension, let's apply blending options, some blend if sliders, right? So I learned a few tricks a few days ago and this is really cool, a nifty trick. To open blending options, you don't need to right click and go to blending options. The best thing to do here is to double click on the right hand side of the layer. Just double click here and blending options open up. Now take this ladder of the underlying layer from left to right to the point where you think the highlights cover a desirable area. In this example, I would go to this till this point, right? It's looking nice, but it's very harsh. We need to get it soft. To get it soft, press and hold alter option, click on it and take break up this ladder, take it all the way to the right. Now we have got it. We have got that extra highlight contrast. Have a look. Now you might want to take down the opacity. There you go, have a look. Now this is very much good. So before, after, we have come a long way. Now let's add a little bit of contrast. To add the contrast, you know the blend mode, right? What was the blend mode that adds contrast? Overlay. Soft light adds a little contrast. Overlay adds a lot of contrast. So let's add any adjustment layer. In this case, I will add levels and change the blend mode from normal to overlay. Watch, such an amazing contrast we have added. But how about not adding contrast to the highlights? How about adding contrast just to the darker areas of the photos, right? Just to the shadows. So open up blending options again. And this time do the opposite. Take this ladder of this layer, of the underlying layer from the right to left, okay? So this is taking away the contrast from the highlights. But we want it to be smooth, right? Press and hold alter option, click on it and take it this way. Now this is smooth, press OK before, after. Now this adds only contrast to the darker areas of the photo. Let's go ahead and decrease the opacity to the point we want. Maybe this 85 is okay. Maybe I would go with 75. Right, all right, let's go. Now let's add an overall contrast. This is okay, adding contrast in the dark areas. I wanna add a little overall contrast. Now this is just streams of consciousness of what you want from your photos. Now if you look at your photo and you see, okay, the red is too much, you might add a selective color adjustment layer. So it's, the, it's that way it goes. What you want, look at your photo. What does the photo, what is the photo asking for, right? And then go forward. So this photo, let's add an overall contrast. Let's add a brightness contrast adjustment layer and let's try increasing the contrast just a little bit. Whoa, I like this. I just love the 60. Let's take down the brightness maybe a little bit. 
Yep, I like minus 20. Let's look at the before and after. Before, after. Wow, such a nice difference. So this is the before. The total before this is the total after this is looking really really nice now how about some fading effect to get the fading effect we need to add what the curves right so let's add go ahead and let's add the curves and in the curves let's bring up the curves here so that you can see me and let's take this up there are two ways of adding a fade if you want to add a colored fade i'll show you how to do that but if you want to add a normal grayish fade here's what you have to do take this above and take it make it bent there you go you have it right if this is what you wanted you have it right it's looking really really nice but if you wanted some color in the fade here's what you have to do open up the curves again delete everything let's delete the details first you have to delete the details from the shadows and then fill it up with colors so our first step is deleting the details from the shadows to do that Take this slider from the left to right. Now, it depends upon how much details you want to delete. Okay, this much is fine. I would go till this much, close it. So we have deleted details from the shadows. Now it's time for us to fill it with a color. So to fill it with a color, add another curves adjustment layer. And doesn't work with the same curves adjustment layer. Add another curves adjustment layer and change the blend mode. But channel, I'm so sorry. Change the channel to blue and increase the blues in the shadows. There you go. And make the same thing that we did in the previous one while doing the grayish uh, fade. Make it, a, make it a little bent. And there you go. Before, after you fill it up with blue. Now, if you wanted to add some other color, you would have done some other color. Maybe you wanted to fill red, you would have done it with red. Maybe you wanted to get a different color other than these three. Find out mixing which two of these colors gets you that color and then do the same in both of that colors a little bit. You get the idea. Okay, now how about adding an overall maybe say, you know, what? The gradient map. Uh, yes, there it is. So these are the kind of things that you might not want to try. So let's go to the settings and choose Photographic toning. Okay, now there are different things you can try from. Okay, for example, you like this one. Okay, and close it. Then decrease the opacity. You don't want it to completely overtake your photo. Just a little bit. There you go. There you go. Now, look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Now, if you didn't want it, for example, and if you think red is too much in the photo, or blue is too much in the photo, here's what to do. Add a selective color adjustment layer. Today we're just having fun. Add a selective color adjustment layer and red is too much, take down the reds. Blue is too much, take down the blues. So to take down the blues, select blues and there is no blue slider. But what's the opposite of blue? Yellow, right? So if we increase the yellow, what's happening? We are decreasing the blues, right? So let's go ahead and increase the yellows. So that way we are decreasing the blues. Have a look. Blues going away right so seance a little bit increase the yellows there you go get rid of the blues you can get rid of the rid of the reds in the same way so that's how you get all of this right so before after now we have created something called a stack of adjustment layer now you can make a group of it select the first one press and hold shift first adjustment layer press and hold sh shift select the last one controller command g or you can also have clicked here to create a group now you can decrease the opacity if you think the effect is too much right so sometimes we go overboard as human beings it's our it's in nature to do go overboard sometimes right and most of times usually now how do we save this as a preset now there are a couple of ways number one creating an action and number two creating a color lookup table now how do we create an action simple i'm just going to show you how to do that so that you can do it yourself all right go to windows actions and then create a new action also you can create a new set now if it's not making sense here's what it is sets are just like folders you can keep actions inside those folders called sets for example you have a set for watercolor actions you have effect one effect two effect three you have a set for black and white toning you have a lot of actions under that folder right so you can create a new set and then create an action or you can directly create an action in an existing set okay so let's create a new set click on this and name the set maybe Big sim perfect. All right, you can name it whatever you want, and in this set, just create a new action. Okay, click on this new action and name it maybe color pop 
nostalgia, whatever. I'm just naming it out of my stream of consciousness, so let's just ignore it. And then hit the record button. And after you hit the record button, you do what we just did. You create all those adjustment layer, and after you have done, you pause it. Okay, so let me just show you, let me just show you two things and then we'll be off. So let's create a new action, name it ABC and Pixim Perfect set. You can choose different sets you, where you put in. These are the folders, okay? And then click record. Then create those adjustment layers that you want, maybe vibrance, increase the vibrance, create one more adjustment layer, increase the vibrance, create one more brightness, contrast, increase the contrast. Oops, right. Okay, if you're satisfied with this, press the stop button and you're good. If you delete all of these three and you select ABC, which we just saved and just created and click the play button, all of these three will be automatically created. Now, number two way is saving this as a color lookup table. Let's go ahead and delete all of these three. Let's turn this on. And to do that, it's very simple. Make sure, first off, make sure you have a background layer. Okay, if you don't have a background layer, so all right, let's just cancel the background layer. If you don't have a background layer, what you can do, you select the layer in which your subject is, go to layer, new, background from layer. And then what you do, you go to file, export, and color lookup tables. Now there you can have a description, maybe color pop, and copyright, you can name your name. Use lowercase file extensions, doesn't matter. Grid points, make sure it's on medium because medium applies really, really fast. If it's high quality, it will take ages to apply, okay? Maximum, it will take a supercomputer to apply. So medium, all right? Now these are the formats in which you want to save your color lookup tables and you can save it on all formats, different software support, different formats and click okay. Now you can save it wherever you want. Let's go ahead and save it on desktop and new folder. Let's name it color pop. And I know I have a big O there. And let's get inside that folder and let's name it say color pop.lut and hit save. Now, how do we apply it? To test it, let's turn this off. Let's add a color lookup adjustment layer. So click on this and go to color lookup. And once you have opened the color lookup, take it above the group so that it's not turned off. And then click on this load 3D LUT. Now let's go to that folder on the desktop that we had and we had color lookup folder right so color pop folder and color pop dot cube let's open it up and let's wait for the magic there you go it's just applied with that one adjustment layer so just a quick recap open up your image look what your image demands and then according to what the image demands and according to what you look for the image start creating adjustment layers and then go crazy with it. Maybe you'll invent something really, really cool and by accident, you make something marvelous and awesome, right? And some of the some of my favorite images happen this way. Now, once you're satisfied with what you have created, for example, I was satisfied with this one, you can save that as a preset so that you can recreate that. So there are two ways of doing it, two ways of saving and two ways of recreating. Number one, saving it as an action and number two, saving it as a color lookup table. So that's pretty much it for this video. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell to make sure that you don't miss anything. Tips, tricks, tutorials, everything. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Keep creating. I should have said it this way. Right? <laughs> Bye. Take care.